Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Monday morning, Hopkins County Commissioner's Court passed two proclamations. One proclamation, the beef cattle industry. With more than 40,000 beef cows producing more than 32,000 calves with net revenue of more than $38.4 million per year, Hopkins County Commissioners named October 5th Hopkins County Beef Day during their Monday morning session. County Judge Robert Newsom read the proclamation. The court, in passing the proclamation, said they were proud to recognize the men and women dedicated to beef production in Hopkins County, the feed companies, farm equipment dealers, livestock auctions, banks, insurance agencies, real estate agents, county government contractors, and employees of all. NetBio also was recognized. It is a nonprofit organization comprised of independent cow-calf producers and agribusiness representatives working together to enhance the beef industry and the local economy by improving cattle genetics, management practices, enhancing production, and added value of their products. They've marketed more than 400,000 preconditioned calves for a gross sales of more than $300 million. Also Monday morning, Hopkins County Commissioner's Court proclaimed October Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Members of the Safe T organization accepted the proclamation. The mission of Safe T is to create an environment where violence and abuse are not tolerated in communities. Abuse diminishes the full expression of life, which is every person's right, according to the proclamation. Safe T is an organization that provides services to survivors of domestic violence and sexual abuse. Those services include 24-hour crisis line, counseling, support groups, shelter, housing assistance, crime victim assistance, rape crisis intervention, accompaniment to court, legal assistance, educational programs, and professional training. Monday afternoon, the safety rest stops on Interstate 30 at Cumby were opened. The new rest stops will replace the aging facilities in Franklin County that will be closed. I guess in the more immediate future, one thing we've, we've managed to put on the books uh, for next year is the beginning of the construction of two new rest areas over in the Cumbria area. Um, the ones that we have near Mount Vernon are becoming old and inadequate. They do not have enough parking space to accommodate all the truck and car needs that we have. At nighttime, they become completely clogged up. The, 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 the drive-through lanes are clogged up with trucks, and uh, motors have trouble getting in and out. And we have trouble, honestly, we have trouble maintaining those old facilities. So I'm looking forward to these new facilities. They're a, a new generation rest area that the Federal Highway Administration is funding. We have a number of them going in around the state and uh, it looks like we're closing in on the uh, uh, some property sales over in the Cumby area. We finally found an area that was near water and sewage treatment facilities and a community that was supporting of that and uh, that's it looks like that's going to come about if uh, we can purchase the property they will probably begin construction next year. Now these are going to be full service rest areas. Yes, in fact, they will be a little bit better than what we've had in the past in that they are double facilities on each side. We'll have two men's restrooms, two women's restrooms. They will be probably totally enclosed from the weather, a little bit better than the ones we've had in the past. By the double facilities, we can close one for either maintenance or for reconstruction without inconveniencing the motorists so and keep it open. Um, we're hoping to have parking places for as many as 50 trucks. We know that we cannot keep up with the total truck need along the interstate now. That's just uh, uh, such a high demand, but it will be, we'll have a better facility and try to separate the truck parking from the, other, uh, the re remaining parking so that uh, your family travelers will have an opportunity to pull in and, and use the restrooms and and uh, take a take a short break. They'll be a, they'll be more aesthetic and we're, we're building them in a, in a wooded area where they'll have walking trails where they can get out and walk their dogs or just uh, walk around and wake up. If you're on a long trip, uh, sometimes uh, drivers become sleepy. It'll give you a chance to jog or, or walk. And uh, we'll have full security, 24-hour security at those those places. Uh, but it'll be a very family-friendly environment. Will this negate the rest areas close to Mount Vernon, or will they be... Uh, continue to be utilized? We will no longer use those as a full rest area. We will uh, convert those into additional truck parking. 
that again because of the high need we have uh, installed some temporary truck parking areas uh, at FM 499 near Cumbie and just overnight those things filled up and have shown us that that, that there's not enough so we're going to take advantage of every opportunity we can to create additional truck parking along the interstate route good morning everyone uh, I appreciate everybody making time to be at the uh, at your new rest area facility I really appreciate your time today um, we have many distinguished guests uh, uh, joining us today um, we have representative Flynn here thank you sir for coming here and for your leadership uh, your presence and your guidance has uh, given a lot of guidance to our department I really appreciate that um, and and Judge Newsom, I uh, appreciate you being here today. Uh, again, you're a great uh, transportation partner with Texas and appreciate your leadership. And I know uh, the commissioners are here as well, and uh, the judge will introduce them later on. Um, I want to take this time to also introduce uh, our staff members. Um, we have Jesse Herrera. Uh, he's the area engineer uh, for uh, Hopkins County. He's back there. Uh, Tommy Henderson, uh, he's the director of operations. Um, of, of course, um, we have our maintenance division here, and our uh, James Stevenson, he's the deputy director of maintenance division. He's here. He has a few words to say, and he'll introduce his staff here in a, a short time. Uh, also, our contractor, Hayden, is here. Matt, are you here? Uh, Matt's here. Uh, of course, without them, this would not be possible. Great job, uh, Hayden Incorporated. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Representative Flynn to say a few words. Thank you. What a, whew, I thought I was going to start with a song there, boy. It turned out. I'd have to get the judge here to help me do that. What, a, what an incredible event for us to have here today. And Commissioners, I know that y'all were very involved in working and, and making sure you work with TxDOT to make this happen. And, and I appreciate it. I want you to know it's great. For a person that spends their life on the highway, rest stops are good things. They really are. And I appreciate us that being able to have one right here in, in our own community because it, uh, it does. It, it gives us a little bit more uh, visibility and the people that are traveling up and down, they find out what, uh, what we're all about. But I am honored to be here and thank you so much for all your hard work. And Judge Newsom, uh, you're all our hero. Come on over. Uh, I appreciate all the work that you do, and you make this a great county for us, and I do appreciate it. And I think he wants you to say a few words. All right, and, and I, I am honored to be here today with Dan Flynn standing beside me. He's a great representative for our state and for our area. I want to, a couple of my commissioners are here today. Danny Evans is Commissioner Precinct 4, which this is in. So come on up here, Danny. And Wade Bartley, I believe, is here. They, come on up, Wade. And, uh, Actually, this thing started out several years ago, actually well before I was judge. Danny was still, uh, has been on the court for a long time, and he's from the beginning. So I want him to say just a couple of words about the background of this really quick, and, uh, and yet tell us a little bit of how this thing came about, because it was more than 10 years ago that you were working on this, as I recall. Actually, I believe it was before even I got on the court, this concept started, and uh, this, this spot was picked and the, the land was acquired uh, probably over 10 years ago. And it's taken a while to get the funding in place. TxDOT, you know, they, they, they've got lots of roads and lots of things to do. And so the funding was uh, a little slow about getting here, but finally it came together. And I guess about, uh, how long ago did we start the, did they start this? 2016. No. It's 2016, so it's been an ongoing process that, since then, and the court has worked together with uh, TxDOT to uh, local the local TxDOT folks and to try to get this thing going and keep it going. And we're awful proud that they chose Hopkins County. We appreciate it, the investment that has been made here, and I think it's going to be a great addition to Interstate 30 as far as safety. And it also showcases our county. You know, I've been to a lot of rest stops around the state as I've traveled, and there's not one as attractive as uh, it's. It's this is a number one, and we want to thank TxDOT so much, Noel. Thank you for the great job y'all done. All right, I'll turn it back over to you, Noel. And uh, I wanted to uh, 
our sheriff is here. Would you like me to introduce? Come on up here, sheriff, and our fire chief. Come on up here, Andy. Uh, this is Lewis Tatum, and, and uh, he and his staff will be keeping a close eye on this place. Our fire chief here has also... Back over here. All right, I want to uh, introduce Andy Ensley, our fire chief, our sheriff, uh, Lewis Tatum, who have done a great job. There's still more to do. They'll be keeping an eye on this place as well. And uh, we've got our new commissioners here. Come on up, Greg and Joe. Uh, they'll be taking office in January, so you'll have great responsibility along with them as well. So I, I'm not sure I covered everybody I needed to, but if I left you out, I apologize for that. But Noel, thank you so much for all TxDOT's doing, not just here, but in Hopkins County. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Um, I just wanted to say a few words about the West area. Um, as you all know, uh, we you know, since 2013, there has been about 750 uh, fatigue-related incidents uh, on the I-30, and there has been three fatalities right here in the last uh, five years that was related to fatigue. And this facility actually helps in that, you know, provides a place to rest. Um, and I, as I was driving up here, I saw many 18-wheelers uh, parked on the side of the road. Uh, obviously, they'll be using this uh, facility as well. Um, if you look at the I-30 uh, average daily traffic, that's about 31,000 cars a day on this highway. Out of that, a third of 18-wheelers. So if we can take some of those 18-wheelers off the road when they are fatigued, it's going to greatly improve safety. So it's, it's another huge um, factor in terms of safety. Um, at this point, I'm going to ask James Stevenson to come in and introduce his staff and say a few words about the rest of it. Thank you, Noel. Um, thank you all for having me. I came up from Austin today. This is a, a big opening. And uh, safety, of course, is one of Texas' top priorities. And that's what these rest areas are for. Uh, this, this rest area was in particular built with the Hopkins County theme. Uh, it takes in the meandering streams, the trees. Uh, you can see that on the outside uh, landscaping that we've done. It, it continues inside in the lobby area where they have exhibits. And again, that theme is continued with the, the natural uh, scenery from this area. Uh, as Noel pointed out, this is a very highly traveled area with a lot of fatigue related uh, incidents. So these safety rest areas, if you all remember when I was growing up as a kid in the 70s, you drive down the road and the rest area was kind of a place to jump out, take care of business and jump back in the car and go. Um, these rest areas are now set up to encourage you to walk around, to get your legs, stretch, actually stretch your legs and, and get that road fatigue shaken, shaken off so you get back on the road drive safely and not have an accident that endangers you, others, and your families. We have a playground, we've got a lobby area. Um, the facility will be maintained and monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we have a space for law enforcement, an office for law enforcement to use so they can come in here. They can also get some rest from getting off the road, do any paperwork they need to do, and also keep an eye on the facility to keep it safe and the people who come here safe. Um, I'm gonna put, sorry, I have to look at some of my notes, but. Um, this, this site was commissioned in 2016. The contract was awarded and it was about $23,700,000 to build these two sites. Of course, there's the one across the road as well. Um, but to me, that's a fantastic investment because what kind of price can you put on a life? I can't think of one. So I think it was money well spent for the traveling public of Texas to travel safely through this area and make sure that nobody gets hurt. I have some of my hardworking staff, uh, Stephen, Harrison, I think I got that right. <laughs> These gentlemen helped design this facility. They were a part of it uh, to make it, again, a place, a safe place for the traveling public to stop, rest, enjoy some time with their family and get off the road and, and get rid of that fatigue that you know we all feel. Sometimes we all get dazed and this is a place to shake that off and get your mind straight. In addition, I have Richard and Wendy. They are part of my inspection staff. They will be coming through here regularly to make sure this, this site is maintained properly and that the investment that all of us as taxpayers of the state have put into this site is kept up and maintained in an adequate level. Again, I can just say that this is this, honestly my first time being here and this, this site is just fantastic. And it's a beautiful county and it's a beautiful area of the state. 
Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Noel. Thank you for letting me talk. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, Matt from Hayden, do y'all want to say anything? Um, once again, I wanted to thank the elected officials. Uh, obviously, without you, this would not be possible. So, again, I really appreciate your help. At this point, we'll, we'll cut the ribbon and uh, representative and judge, if y'all would do the honors. Well, I just want to be sure everybody knows how much work you put in making this happen. Commissioners will all thank you for all that, because this is going to be a, a great addition to what we're doing here. It really is, and, and we, we appreciate your hard work. I know you, like you say, you, you came in a little on the, on the, in the middle of it, I guess, but you made it happen, and we appreciate it. We really do. Alexis Lopez, who is student body president at Sulphur Springs High School, along with her officers, came up with a very neat idea for the students. It's called Food Truck Friday. Let's find out more. Back in April, I did um, a presentation about food trucks coming to our school and serving our students during lunch. Um, Mr. Driver and I and the rest of our, my assistant principals have worked really hard to get this together and flowing nicely. Um, it was September 7th this year that we uh, finished our first event and it went well. A um, few hiccups but nothing major in all everything was very successful. We had good feedback from both the trucks and the students so it was a very nice event. So the trucks are a private uh, company? They are. They're all locally owned. Um, we tried to stay within our community so we could have a community event as well as a student organization. Okay. So when is the next opportunity? This Friday, October 5th. We are inviting a couple of more trucks and we're going to have them set up outside in the bus lane. And all of the students will have an opportunity to go out there. I think our food services will also be out there. So even students that don't want to go to the trucks will be able to go out and enjoy the time outside. So. Hey, that's nice. So you think three trucks this time? Um, we had five trucks last okay. time. And we're looking at six trucks and then tropical snow. Okay, six trucks and doing different kinds of foods, such as? Mm -hmm. So there is Asian Express. Ladona, Authentic Mexican, Tito's Rico's Tacos, Tiki Time Barbecue, Burgerland, and Pizza Inn for the trucks. And then, as I said, Tropical Snow will also be out there. A variety. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long do the students have out there? So the trucks are allowed to arrive between uh, 9 and 10. And then at 10.50, they're going to do um, the first lunch. So first lunch will be served then, and it'll go all the way... I think until 11.37 or 11.30 something. And then all of the rest of the lunches will also have that time. We're doing extended lunches. So it'll be between 10.50 and 1 something. The, the students will be served and then they'll have the opportunity to serve teachers and staff members after that. Okay, so members of the community can come out? Um, for this event, we're looking just to serve our students and our faculty members. Okay. So other teachers and other um, members are allowed to come from other campuses, but right now we're just looking at our okay. students. So what did you have last time? We had all of the same trucks except for Burgerland. Okay, so we're adding Burgerland. Mm -hmm. So what is a favorite of yours? Um, I know you like them all, most likely. If you're like me, I would want to visit them all. Um, honestly, I think that the Asian Express is probably my favorite. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You're probably sampling around, however. Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay. I love food, for sure. Um, so this is a, a unique idea, and so how did you come up with it? Our student council went to state convention back in April, and there were a few different schools in the Houston area that had this idea and they did this. So I took bits and pieces off of how they did it and I came up with my own presentation and that's how we went. Hmm. And so it benefits everybody. It does. So this next round is going to be um, a fundraiser, so to speak. So the trucks will do a $25 parking fee or a $25 or more donation. So to park there or to be allowed, they pay a $25 parking fee? Yes. But the food trucks do. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and so then as students purchase at each of the trucks, they uh, make uh, a gain there. Mm -hmm. So all of the profits that they get off of their students will go to them. Um, it's up to them to do a donation, but the $25 is a set fee because we have to have some type of fundraiser by okay. doing this. Okay. And so this is through the student council? Yes, student council has um, put this together. We're the ones that sat down and came up with the idea and then um, we've had a lot of support through our administration and up through the board and everything. So, You must have a pretty amazing council. Yes, we do. <laughs> I love my officers. They've done a great job this year. I'm very proud of them. Would you like to name them? Yes. Um, I am president and then J.C. Glenn is my vice president. Chloe Kennedy is secretary. Alex Post is treasurer. Brianna Wooten is my reporter. Campbell Cody is parliamentarian. And Lily Worth is spirit director. Okay. Sounds like a pretty good team there, Alexis. For sure. Um, this will... So the food truck's coming to school and the bus parking lane, did you say? Yes. Is going to take place again how often? We have up to six um, of these events that we're allowed to do. So this will be our second one. We are looking to do possibly one more for playoffs for one of our sports whether that's volleyball basketball or football and then we'll do the rest of them sometime during the spring okay in 2019 yes ma'am okay thank you for coming in today thank you for very, having very me. interesting information from our sulfur springs high school thank you alexis thank you here's don julian with sports a Lady Cats volleyball team lost a close district match at home Friday to Greenville 3-2. The Lady Cats have started district play with three straight losses. Their season record is 24-10. After that Greenville match Friday, I talked with Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manus. We couldn't just put everything down against them. Uh, we actually had to, had to play some defense, just some unforced errors here and there, just some missed serves. Uh, some balls hit out, some balls hit in the net, uh, not reacting quick enough on defense. Uh, you know, just, just small things like that, it, it, makes, it makes a whole new ball game. Uh, you know, we, we kind of, you know, we kind of uh, painted ourselves in a corner here. We're going to have to really, really fight to get out of it. But, you know, like I told them in the huddle, I'm, I'm an optimist, so anything can happen. Yeah. People can beat other people and we can win out. I mean, that's always a possibility, and the key is them believing that. Yeah. That's going to be the biggest thing, them believing it. Yeah, absolutely. I fall back on the cliche, you take them one at a time. You just, you know, if you look at the big picture, seven victories in a row, it just, but if you look at it one game at a time, you just, you know, you, the coaches say that, and you just, you, you have to just one win at a time to get back in it. You know, that's exactly it. You know, situations like this, you know, you, you find out what you're like as a team, you know, how mentally tough you are, if you're able to bounce back. I mean, uh, the thing about, about losing is, it can go two ways. I mean, it can fire you up and get you going, but it can be contagious too. And we have to be real, real careful to realize that we're a good team and that we still are capable of doing great things. And so that's what I want the ladies to understand. You're going to a hostile gym now at Mount Pleasant and they've struggled, you know, trying to get on the win column. So that's uh, two hungry teams going at each other next Tuesday. Night. Oh, most definitely. I mean, there are teams looking for that, looking for that win. I don't know how they did tonight Mount Pleasant, but uh, we're both going to be looking for a win, a much-needed win. Uh, anybody uh, you can point out to that really you know, had a good game for you tonight? Oh, Autumn, to Autumn Tanton had a phenomenal, a phenomenal game. I thought Sadie Stroud had a great game defensively passing the ball. But, I mean, when you put up 23 kills in a match, that's – Yeah, that is that, – that might be a team record. I mean, I have to go back and look at, you know, the, some of the older stats, but that is putting up a lot of kills in a match. It looks like there's a lot of dependency out there on trying to find Autumn. It seems like a lot right. of times, you know, of course she's playing so well, why not? Oh, most most definitely. I mean, uh, when you have a hot hand, you want to give them the ball. And, of course, she was, she was the hot hand tonight. And, of course, uh, our setter tried to find her, you know. And, and that's a smart move. Well, you know, the good thing, I mean, they're playing hard. Or, you know, you can't say that they're loafing or anything like that. You know, it's... It's just uh, we're coming out on the short end of the stick. All right, and that's what I told him in the huddle. I said, you know, pretty good volleyball match. I mean, just just uh, 
you know, just some missed serves, some unforced errors, and it's a different game, you know. We have to come out a little bit stronger early in sets. We can't get down, you know, six points early and try to fight back against good teams. And, uh, you know, that's just something that hopefully we will learn before district's over. Yeah, one thing that was noticeable was the, the long volleys. Yes. You know, some incredible stuff going on out there. Gotta win those, you know, and of course, Every coach is telling their team that, but and, and, no, that, that really knocks the wind out of other teams if you can win those long volleys. And uh, I, th I think Greenville probably won a few more than us tonight, and, and that makes a difference. The Lady Cats do play at Mount Pleasant Tuesday night. Wildcats senior golfer Carter Lewis played well in a Texas Junior Golf Tour event over the weekend. Lewis finished ninth out of a field of 100 golfers at the event in Burleson. Playing on the Wildcats golf team last spring, Lewis qualified for the regional golf tournament at the district tournament last April. Five new members of the Sulphur Springs Wildcat Hall of Honor will be inducted in ceremonies Friday. The five will be recognized at the field at Gerald Prim Stadium Friday evening just prior to kickoff at the Wildcats district football game against Forney. One of those inductees is Jack Sickles, a football player from the class of 1933. Sickles was the second Wildcat ever to achieve all state honors in football. He was a three-year starter as a defensive end and a flanker. Sickles was six foot tall, weighing 170 pounds. He attended Texas Tech University after high school graduation. In 1968, Sickles was hired as the head of maintenance for the Sulphur Springs ISD. He later owned Bennett Lumber and Fence Company. Sickles passed away in 1999, and several of his family members will be accepting the Hall of Honor Award prior to the game Friday night. And I'll have more on these new inductees throughout this week. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.